Hey everyone. So, real quick. What if you never had to go to the CFO to ask for money for your projects ever again? What I have been working with um, for a number of years now is this concept of how do we start to, like, how do we unpick project management as a const construct? Like, a lot of you will know that um, that's my training, that's my background. I came through architecture, I came through construction, I came through project management, and then it feels like my career has been learning how to unpick that um, that professional group and um, and in the kindest possible way. Like, how do we get to better outcomes rather than these big commitments up front that um, then we have to kind of manage through and, and, you know, we still have huge failure rates in the project management um, professional bodies. They'll talk about huge failure rates of projects. So, you know, there's got to be a better way, right? Um, and I wanted to talk to you briefly, just give you the headlines around um, something that I've been working with for a while now, which is around how do you stop having the need to ask for money for big projects? So what does that look like? Well, it looks like going and understanding what it is that you need to do, making a bunch of process changes up front before you even touch the IT stack, um, and through those savings that you make in the process change, um, or potentially some, some minor system consolidation, the savings that you make there without having spent any money other than your own time and energies and the time and energies of your team, through and through the the change in operations, the, those savings in time and effort and energy start to actually pay for the project work that you need to do or the investment that you need to make around software or people or process. So that's it, the headline. So what do you need to do that? Well, up front, you need a really good understanding of what's important to your customers. What is it that they want? What do they expect from you? What's important from them? And you hear me talk about um, customer demand capture or a customer listening program or a customer insights program. You must put that in place up front because that's what drives everything. Another big piece of the puzzle is understanding and having the capability in your organization to then take what you're doing in the capture phase and work out what that means for the business process change or the IT systems change as a result. I um, had a really cool meeting this week, uh, which... I think a lot of us were seriously frustrated for most of it and, and you know, there was a lot of good positive conflict, but um, we were looking at, at essentially trying to design this this architectural layout um, or this, um, this data strategy around customer demand. So from a, like taking the demand that we'd heard from customers and using that to drive what that architecture looks like in your IT systems. It's super cool. So you need that capability around, like once you've got the, the customer insights bit in place and you're capturing that, how do you then put that into action? There's a skill set that goes around applying the, the changes in process, dri like driving process change as a result of customer demand. Um, and one of the really critical components around that and, what, and why I think it's a different skill set to what we've had traditionally is because for it to be really effective, you actually want your frontline teams driving that. It's not about somebody in um, in an office and back a house having seen what's going on, deciding what to change, and then going and implementing. It's actually about your frontline team starting to drive that change and improvement. That's a that's a big mindset set shift, right? Um, and then having having gone through all of that, you need to then be able to have the financial acumen and the um, the the smarts around how do you understand that in a financial sense so that you can put that on paper um, and demonstrate the savings that you've made as a result of all of that process change. And so there's this capability around um, the finance aspect, the data insights aspect. Um, and I think some of the like the best data insights people that I've met and had the privilege of working with have started often um, in kind of humanities, political science, in the arts, um, psychology those fields and then got into this place where they love nerding out on data and how do we present this visually um, and exploring I think for them it's about putting together both the science and the art um, and the creative side starts to come out so they're not necessarily your science and maths types they're people that have come at it from a different angle and then got into that aspect as well and there's this balance that comes through and so that data insights capability is really important 
Um, and then you need a team, right? You, ne you need a core team of change makers that get how to put this stuff together. And that's around, um, you know, project management turning into more about visibility and um, lean startup principles and the visualization of knowledge um, and gluing a team together. Uh, you need that classic kind of business analyst capability, but turning it more into, well, we need someone who knows how to take this concept of value from customers that we've generated through our demand and our listening capture program, understand what value means, and then slice and dice all of the work that we need to do down to those small independently valuable chunks, down into those small pieces that deliver value, um, but keeping in mind the bigger picture and the outcome. So that BA role starts to shift. You also need people in your organization that understand how to build responsive architectures. Like there's a philosophy around the development of software and technology that will enable you to do things. Um, and once you come across that, it'll change your world because all of a sudden IT becomes less about it's hard and it costs a lot of money and more about we can build this in five minutes and everything everything that's hard is actually the process change and the people and the culture bit. So you need that technologist that's able to build that. Um, and then I think you, the, the final piece is really that we call it like a designer capability and that role needs to flip into somebody who knows how to uh, design experiments, design tests, design how you're going to make mistakes and how you're going to fail in a way that leads to learning. And so that person's role becomes really about how do we get through testing these things and testing them quickly um, and learning from those things and the feedback loops that go with that, the capturing of the insights and that data piece feeding back in, those core people are what's required to then deliver those big chunky pieces up front around understand what your customers expect of you, what's important to them, get your customer insights happening. Then as a, like, as a result of having understood that, what's the process change that we make that starts to weed out those things that are not important to customers? And then how do we package that up in a way that demonstrates holistically that we've taken time, cost, energy out of the business and that's then the piece that goes up and says to your CFO or your finance organization, hey, we've already made these savings. So the money that we're asking for, we aren't actually asking for. We never have to ask the CFO for money again because we've understood what's important to customers. We've redesigned process around that. We've lined the organization up around that. And the savings that we've made as a result of doing that are actually going to pay for any investment in software and time and energy that we need to make bigger change um, and and then you kind of hit your um, procurement and delivery practices off the back end of that. Uh, so I want to share that today. Uh, it kind of blew a few people up just over the past few weeks when I shared that with a number of people and, and it's kind of a thing to get your head around like how do we get to a point where we never have to ask the CFO for money ever again because what we've been working on is taking cost out of the business before we ask for the investment in the business. And so flipping that project construct on its head. I'd love to hear what you think about that. Um, definitely hit me up in the comments section below. Uh, I'm also really keen to kind of go into this in a whole bunch more detail. Uh, I've got a webinar that I'm planning that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that one. If you're not on my email list, then it'll take a little bit longer. If you're on my email list, you're going to get first dibs at getting into that group. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of teaching about this and exploring in more detail. Um, and I'm really keen to have the people in there who are wanting to understand this in more detail. And you're going to have heaps of time to ask questions and we're just going to get into it. So keep an eye out for that one too. Um, I hope wherever you are in the world this week, you are having a wonderful, wonderful day and uh, we'll see you very soon. Thanks.